I'm Joe Crover and we're here at the Pima Air and Space Museum in Tucson, Arizona and this is the uh, McCulloch engine. It's the T-RAD 4180. It is a radial diesel four-cylinder two-stroke uh, aircraft engine developed uh, in the early 1970s and we are here to do an inspection on this engine and learn about it and uh, get inside with an endoscope camera and see some of the internals of it. So uh, there's four cylinders all under these shrouds. This is an air-cooled engine. Um, this was cylinder number one, number two, number three, and number four. We we're assuming that, that that meant it was a standard rotation counterclockwise uh, engine. Uh, if you zoom in here, uh, this whole front section of the engine is the accessory drive. Uh, so there's a power section here, and it's a split case. It's got uh, two halves of the, of the uh, crankcase that come together, uh, and then the cylinders are attached to that. And then this accessory is bolted to the front of that. On this accessory case, we have the diesel injection system which is uh, individual unit injection pumps. So this would be one, two down around here, three and four, and then the lines running up to the injector at the top of the cylinder. Uh, there is a rack control, appears to be right here, uh, off of this uh, linkage coming up into uh, this rack control arm that is going internal, and we're assuming there's a ring here controlling the rack position of the injection pumps. Another interesting feature about this engine is that it has an air start system and so here we believe is the air supply going into a manifold and then uh, in tandem with each injection pump is on a cam ring we're speculating that they're controlling the airflow to uh, do an air start uh, and these are the air lines to the, each cylinder. Um, and so our assumption is they supply forced air and that would crank the engine over and start the engine. Um, uh, let's uh, look at some of the other things going on here. We have standard aircraft uh, oil filter, a uh, prop governor. Down here we have, uh, which you can't quite see, but we believe the oil pump and scavenge system, if it has a scavenge system, is all uh, mounted internally. In, inside this oil sump. Here you'll see an oil cooler that's integrated directly into the sump that's bolted onto the uh, accessory drive case. Uh, a fuel pump, a fuel filter um, running as well off of the accessory drive. On top there is a drive and this is where the generator would have been mounted. It appears to be not there of course. Uh, and then we have a breather and we're not quite sure what that is yet. Dive in and look closer at this. You can see this, in, this engine was set up for a lot of instrumentation. And so we see these uh, hard plastic lines. And they're connected to various points. And our assumption here is that they're getting an air pressure reading off different parts of the engine. Um, manifold pressure, exhaust gas pressure, uh, different places like that. These lines here are the return fuel after the injector, go to a manifold, and then this firewall bulkhead, and connect on the other side. You come to the back, you can see this, the, this uh, panel of thermocouple connections, and there's a bunch of thermal connect couples connected to the front of the engine. And you can, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but you can zoom in and see on the aluminum, there's a bunch of numbers. Uh, indicating all the ports and connections that probably was a map of all the uh, instrumentation they had hooked up to this engine. This engine is supercharged and turbocharged. So the supercharger is this case right in here. It is geared and uh, running off the engine. Um, I believe it's somewhere 5 to 1. Turbo is uh, in series with the supercharger to provide the uh, boost air and throughput air that it needs to operate the two-cycle two operation. Um, the exhaust, you can see, is wrapped here uh, very tightly around into a manifold that then connects into the turbocharger um, 
turbine area, and then the on the compressor side is fed into an intercooler. The intercooler crosses over down, and then into the uh, center of the impeller of the supercharger. Uh, note right here, there is some kind of control on the airflow to the supercharger. The engine mounts, uh, there's four engine mounts, and uh, here, 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 and one on top, and they look like they are integrated directly into the uh, supercharger housing that would be bolted onto the back of the crankcase.